the next topic which is tax on distributed profits of domestic companies tax on distributed profits of domestic companies which is also very commonly known as dividend distribution tax very important topic for your examination because there is a very important amendment which has happened in this particular area and therefore i am discussing this concept with you with some practical questions so that you have got a complete conceptual clarity the provisions of dividend distribution tax they are contained in section 115o of the income tax act section 115p talks about the interest payment if the dividend if the dgt is not paid in time or is not paid by the companies and 115q talks when the company is deemed to be in default now this tax is to be paid in addition to the income tax paid by the company it is applicable only to the domestic companies these are the companies which domestic companies are the companies which declare distribute or pay dividend in india so it has to be charged on on the dividend which is declared distributed or paid whichever is earlier whether it is interim dividend or it is final dividend dividend distribution tax has to be paid it is applicable dividend distribution tax has to be paid whether the dividends are paid out of current profits or they are paid out of accumulated profits earlier what happened was that uh, there was a condition that if you know because we have got chains of companies a company is a subsidiary of b company and b company is a subsidiary of c company so what happens that when uh, when c company pays dividend it pays it to the b company and when b companies pay a company pays dividend it pays to a company so the question that comes that if the same amount is being paid again and again what is the point of paying dividend distribution tax again and again so in order to mitigate this cascading effect of dividend distribution tax it was said that if the subsidiary has paid the dividend tax and subsidiary means a subsidiary in which the holding company has got more than 50% of the share capital then you know the holding company is not required to pay dividend distribution tax to the extent of the dividend which it has received from its subsidiary is the point clear is the point clear if subsidiary is paying dividend distribution tax then why should the holding again pay the dividend distribution tax but if the holding is paying more dividend than what it has received from the subsidiary then in that situation definitely the subsidiary would be required to pay the dividend distribution tax the holding would be required to pay so the rate of dividend distribution tax is 15% surcharge is 1.5% and here the surcharge is nothing to do with the amount of total income in all cases in dividend distribution tax surcharge is payable education says of 2% and and uh, senior and and higher education says of 1% so that makes it total rate of dividend as 16.995% but there is an important amendment as i said which is applicable on dividends which are paid with effect from 1st uh, of october 2014 the amendment says that the dividend is now required to be grossed up with the income distributed for computing the tax liability on account of dividend distribution tax so now what you have to do you have to gross up the dividend earlier what was happening that if you were paying 100 rupees of of dividend you were paying 16.995 rupees of tax and remaining amount was being distributed to the shareholders now the amendment says that okay if you are paying 100 rupees you will first gross up that 100 rupees with 16.995 so 100 divided by 16.995 will give you the rate of dividend distribution tax so uh, now the question is that uh, if i look at the language of the law in that situation it says that the grossing up has to be with the rate of dividend tax which is mentioned in section 115o of the income tax act now 115o talks only about 15% so if i just gross up 100 with 15% so that makes it 100 multiplied by 15 divided by 85 Hundred multiplied by fifteen divided by eighty-five because they say that fifteen percent should be on on eighty-five. It should not be on hundred because actually you are paying eighty-five to your shareholder. Then why are you saying that you are paying hundred? When you were declaring hundred rupees of dividend, you were paying fifteen to the government and eighty-five to the shareholder. It should not be like this. So the government said you calculate fifteen percent of eighty-five percent. So that of eighty-five and you know. 
then you have to calculate surcharge on it and then you have to cal calculate education cess on it so the effective rate comes to 19.99% and if you take uh, like if you take as a denominator not 15 but if you take 16.995 which includes surcharge and education cess your effective rate would be 20.475% there is still an ambiguity whether the rate should be whether the calculation should be by taking 15 as a denominator or 16.995 as a denominator in the examination whichever of the two you take the answer would be considered correct whichever of the two you take the answer would be considered correct okay another review question a domestic company is liable to pay dividend tax at the rate of 16.995% of the dividend declared true or false no it cannot be true it used to be true but with the amendment the rate of the effective rate of tax has become around 20.475% you have to go for grossing up right so therefore the statement has become untrue in the present context the cascading effect of dividend distribution tax is minimized in case of holding and subsidiary companies comment the answer is true right because now you can in case I'm getting some dividend from my subsidiary, I can get a, uh, I can reduce that dividend while calculating the dividend distribution tax liability. What will happen in case of bonus shares? I have got some income. I am not declaring dividend, but I'm issuing bonus shares. Do I have to pay dividend distribution tax? I have got some income, I have got some reserves and surplus, I have got some profit which is lying in reserves and surplus. I have, I, I convert that reserves and surplus into bonus shares and I don't pay any dividend to my shareholders. Do I have to pay dividend, declare, dividend distribution tax? The answer is no because, because bonus shares are not defined as dividend under the definition of dividend. Definition of dividend is given under section 2 subsection 22 of the Income Tax Act that does not include bonus shares and therefore on, on the issue of bonus shares you do not pay any dividend distribution tax. On the issue of bonus shares you do not pay any dividend distribution tax but when these bonus shares are finally sold like if, if I have been issued bonus shares my cost of getting these bonus shares is zero. When I sell these bonus shares in the market, then whatever amount I get, that will be considered as a capital gain and I would be required to pay capital gain tax, right? Yeah. So now we have some practical questions. Yaman Limited is a company in which 60% shares are held by Pillu Limited. Yaman Limited declared a dividend amounting to rupees 35 lakhs to its shareholders for the financial year 13-14 in its annual general meeting held on 10th May 2014. Dividend distribution tax was paid by Yaman Limited on 15th May 2014. Pillu Limited declared an interim dividend amounting to rupees 50 lakhs on 15th October 2014 for the year ended 31st March 2015. Compute the amount of tax on dividend payable by Pillu Limited. What would be your answer if 58% of the shares of Pillu Limited were held by Kafi Limited, an Indian company? Situation is clear. Yaman Limited is a subsidiary of Pillu Limited. Yaman Limited has declared a dividend of rupees 35 lakhs for its shareholders. And that means 60% of the dividend must have gone to Pillu Limited. Right? Now, Pillu Limited is declaring a dividend. What is the amount of dividend distribution tax which is payable by Pillu Limited? And second question is, I would take it a little later. Is the point clear? Is the situation clear? Question clear? Okay. Now, as per section 115O, I am reading the theory because it also needs to be clear. As per section 115O, dividend distribution tax at the rate of 16.995% is 
is levyable on dividend declared distributed or paid by a domestic company as per section 115.01a a holding company receiving dividend from its domestic subsidiary company can reduce the same from dividend declared distributed or paid by it for this purpose matching principle does not apply this means that even if dividend received from the domestic company and the dividend distributed by the holding company relate to different periods now you saw that the holding that the subsidiary had had declared dividends in 2013-14 and the holding was declaring dividends in 2014-15 so even if the periods are different the same can be adjusted for the purpose of computing dividend distribution tax of the holding company however the dividend from its domestic subsidiary company should be received in the same financial year in which the holding company declares distributes or pays dividend further the dividend shall not be considered for reduction more than once the conditions to be fulfilled for this purpose are the domestic subsidiary company should have paid dividend distribution tax which is payable on such dividend and the holding company should be a domestic company so holding and subsidiary both should be domestic company and holding would be considered as holding if it holds more than 50% of the normal value of the equity shares of another company and with effect from uh, 1st of october 2014 a new section 1b has been inserted to provide that for the purposes of determining the tax on distributed profits payable in accordance with section 115o any amount by way of dividends referred to in section 115o1 as reduced by the amount referred to in section 115o1a shall be increased to such amount as would after reduction of tax on such increased amount at the rate specified in section 115.01 be equal to the net distributed profits you would say that what is this language i'm not able to follow i'll just i have just also told you that if you have to gross up this complete language means but before be, but before grossing up we have to give the deduction of the dividends that we have received from our subsidiary company so in this particular case the dividend which is distributed by pillu limited is 50 lakhs the pillu limited was a holding company it has received 60% of 35 lakhs from yemen limited so 60% of 35 lakhs is equal to 21 lakhs so net distributed profits by pillu limited is 29 lakhs because on 21 lakhs yemen limited has uh, already paid dividend distribution tax now pillu limited has to pay dividend distribution tax on 29 lakhs so in order to calculate that what should be the rate what we have to do we have to gross up this 20 this 29 lakhs so that means we have to find out if this 29 lakhs is 85 percent then what is 15 percent of that 85 percent so for that 15 divided by 85 multiplied by 29 is equals to 5.12 so your gross dividend is 34.12 on this we will add the you know additional income tax payable as uh, by pillu limited that means uh, this is sorry we, on this we will calculate 15 percent which is coming as 5.12 on this we will calculate surcharge at the rate of 10 percent and we will calculate education says and secondary and higher education says at the rate of three percent so the total amount of dividend distribution tax which has to be paid by pillu limited would be 5.8 lakh rupees is the point clear is the calculation clear so what we have done we have not grossed up the rate we have not charged the rate as 20.475% you can do it like that as well you can calculate on 29 it would be coming as 19.995% rather so on 29 if you calculate 19.995% that would also be 5.8 only but this is the way you have to calculate and this is the way you have to present okay ji any any doubts any doubts students are you there no okay so the point is clear
here we have re removed the cascading effect we are not charging dividend distribution tax on the, on the amount that that is already passed through ddt because yemen limited had already paid the dividend distribution tax so we are not going to charge the uh, the dividend distribution tax by pillu limited uh, on 21 lakhs which it has received from yemen limited and in even if you know this pillu limited would have been a subsidiary of kafi limited then also this would not have made any difference then also it would not have made any difference right so that is what is the is the point so even if it is a multi layered structure then also there is no problem this benefit we are going to get and this grossing as we did at 15% you can do this grossing at 16.995% also so when we said that in the in the in the last solution we said 15 divided by 100 minus 15 you can do it 16.995 divided by 100 minus 16.995 so that that kind of a calculation also can be done so where you would be including surcharge in education says both the solutions are correct now another question extra limited gives the following information for the year ended 31st march 2015 Net profit as per profit and loss account for the financial year 13 14 rupees 33 lakhs was included in general reserve. On 1st of August 2014, the company redeemed its redeemable bonus shares for rupees 9 lakh 9,000. 9, A shareholder holding 10% equity shares of the company borrowed rupees 3 lakhs from the company. At the rate of 18% per annum on 31st August 2014, company declared dividend of rupees 14 lakhs at its annual general meeting held on 30th of September 2014, but the dividend remained unpaid up to 31st March 2015. You have to compute the tax liability of the company and also give the reasons for treatment of each item. Now here, first of all, the definition of dividend has to be made clear. The net profit which was there in the general reserve is not the dividend because you have not paid it to anybody. But if the company decides to redeem its redeemable bonus shares, now bonus shares which are given are generally not redeemable in nature. Isn't it? Do you redeem the bonus shares ever? Have you ever heard about redeeming the bonus shares? No. So if I am issuing certain redeemable bonus shares, that means that in the nature of preference shares, they are not equity shares, they are preference shares. And if, if you give bonus to your preference shares, in that situation it is considered as dividend under section 222A of the Income Tax Act. So this 9,9000 would be considered as dividend and not as bonus shares. Right? So in a way you are parting away with your profits and you are giving those profits to your shareholders. So therefore you are not giving it directly as dividends but you are giving it as redemption of the redeemable bonus share. So 9 lakh 9000 would be considered as dividend. A shareholder holding 10% equity shares has borrowed. So this comes under section 222E of the, of the Income Tax Act where it's loans by the substantial shareholders. But on this, dividend distribution tax is not applicable. As I said, this falls under section 222E of the Income Tax Act and dividend distribution tax is applicable only from section 222A to 222D of the Income Tax Act. So here this section, on this section, dividend distribution tax would not be charged and company has declared a dividend of rupees 14 lakhs but it has not paid it up to 31st March 2015. What would be the, uh, the DDT liability? That is to be seen. Now redemption of bonus shares 9 lakh 9 thousand, dividend declared 14 lakhs. Now you would question me that ma'am the company has not paid the dividends it has just declared it. Do I need to charge dividend distribution tax? The answer is yes because when we when we saw the definition under section 115O it said dividend declared, distributed or paid, declared, distributed or paid whichever is earlier. So because you have declared the dividend you have to pay dividend distribution tax. Now your net distributed profits are 23,9000, gross it up, 
multiply by 15 divide by 85 get 4 lakh 7071 which is your increase for the purpose of grossing up total grossed up amount is 27 lakh 16471 calculate 15 percent of of this and add surcharge in education says to it calculate 15 percent of this and charge education says in secondary and higher education says on it so you would be getting 4,61,664 right now whatever I have told you is given in form of theory only that bonus shares it is assumed that they are in the form of redeemable preference shares since only then such redemption is possible and if bonus shares are issued to equity shareholders it does not amount to distribution of dividend as there is no release of assets but when bonus shares are redeemed there would be release of assets and then it would constitute as dividend under section 222a borrowing by a shareholder comes under section 222e and therefore the company is not liable to pay DDT on it and the why we are charging uh, DDT on the dividend which has not been paid up to the end of the previous year because DDT has to be paid within 14 days from the date of declaration or distribution of payment whichever is earliest now because the dividend has been declared so the DDT has to be paid in the last financial year only and then we talk about the grossing up can I take one more question Yes, surcharge is applicable even if it is less than 1 crore. Okay, now one more question here. X company limited, a domestic company, holds 51% of the share, share capital of Y company limited, which is another domestic company. X company is holding 51% of another company, which is again a domestic company. Y company paid total dividend of 50 lakhs for the year 31st March 2014. Y is a subsidiary, X is a holding and y, the subsidiary has paid a dividend of 50 lakhs in financial year 2014-15. Out of the dividend received from Y company, X company, X company distributed dividend of rupees 15 lakhs. Explain with reasons the amount of dividend chargeable to tax and the dividend distribution tax payable by X company limited. Can you give an answer to this? It's a simple question. Holding company has received a dividend from the subsidiary company holding company holds 51 percent of the shareholding of the subsidiary company and the subsidiary has paid a total dividend of rupees 50 lakhs holding company holds 51 percent so you can calculate 51 percent of 50 lakhs which would be around 25.5 lakhs i think and out of this the company is paying a dividend of rupees 15 lakhs so the is the company required to pay dividend distribution tax think about it No DDT. Why? The reason is that because the amount of dividend which is paying is less than the amount that it has received from its subsidiary. Right? But if it would have distributed a dividend of rupees 60 lakhs, then definitely 60 minus 25.5, whatever was the remaining 34.5, on that the company would have required, would have been required to pay dividend distribution tax. I am going directly to the calculation. Okay, I will take the previous slide as well. So, in the first case, because the 15 lakhs is less than 25.5 lakhs, so no tax liability under section 115O. But in case the, the dividend distributed by X company would have been 60 lakhs. In that situation, on 34.5 lakhs, we would have charged the dividend distribution tax by grossing up.
so these were the questions that i have discussed with you i have not discussed with you uh, the question relating to foreign dividends which i think uh, you should do it yourself under section 115 double b d if i am receiving any foreign dividends from a subsidiary which is outside india where i i am holding more than 26% of the share holding i am required to pay tax at the rate of 15% on the amount of dividend which i am receiving so on those lines if you want to do you can do some of the practical questions which i have not covered in this ppt in case you've got any doubts while doing those questions you can just you know uh, get back to me there is no grossing up requirement there but you would not be able to claim any deduction of expenses clear anything that you want to say now so i think the concepts are clear to you now i'm trying to give you more of the practical questions because that will give you better conceptual clarity so are the concepts clear so now in the next class we have got uh, some tax planning to discuss which i would be taking up in the next class i am not taking precisely right now with you the capital and revenue expenditure kind of questions which are quite a bit contained in the cases which i have sent you today so please go through those cases and in case you've got any doubts we would be discussing uh, you know those questions yes you have to read a lot that is there but you know once the concepts are clear uh, you you can your your understanding would be better and what i want is that now immediately that you we have finished the concepts here you should read because otherwise you know you will forget a few things and then when you try to read it it would be very difficult to understand so the moment the class is over you know in in a day or two you must read the concept from the book from the study material from the reference books whichever are the sources because if you give it some time then you will again start facing you know confusions right so with this i would say good night to all of you thank you so very much and we meet again in the next class where would we where we would be discussing tax planning so bye bye and see you in the next class